Good morning. Um, prior to this research, there was a um, total lack of uh, concrete data that uh, you know that you could point at on the impact of maternal uh, death to families. So, Family Care International, um, working closely with uh, uh, Cambridge CDC and the regional uh, research uh, project report. And again, this study was uh, launched and disseminated in uh, March this year by the Cabinet Secretary. So we will just give the key findings of the report. So, so uh, <coughs> using this data, we cannot say clearly that we have um, compelling data that give a rationale for the need to invest on maternal uh, health and specifically on why we need to actually increase our resources for maternal and child health. This study was conducted in Rwanda, Gem and Siaya, and uh, it was nested within the Cambridge CDC Demographic Surveillance System, the HDSS. The study was conducted in the period of uh, June 2011 and ended uh, in uh, 2013 March. So I'll go straight to the key findings. So what are the impact of a maternal death on neonatal survival? In this study, we had a total of 59 maternal deaths that we were following. Please remember this was a case control, so we had the controls with a similar number. So for the cases, we had 35 infants who survived, but eight died in the first week. Another eight died in several weeks, leaving us with only 15 surviving babies. If you quickly look at this, we are talking about a survival rate of less than 25%. So, the one most striking impact of a maternal death is neonatal survival. Hardly do we have the neonates survive. So, the next slide looks at the impact of a maternal death on children's schooling. Unfortunately, this is one of the areas that is totally affected. Children dropped out of school, mainly because of the disruptions in the community and in the families. Mothers being mostly uh, the key uh, economic um, um, leaders uh, in those communities. And so there was loss of uh, a woman's income. Some children could not afford, but apart from affordability, we had homes that were left uh, with children leading the households, children-led households. It was impossible for these children to continue schooling, especially those who were above 10 years. They had to actually take care of their siblings. Well, apart from that, we had a lot of children who, you know, because of disruption, who had actually to live with their relatives, their in-laws, and it is not always easy to take up the burden of uh, education for these students, even when we have free primary education. There are also other costs that are related to that. So overall, there was a great effect on uh, students' schooling and a lot of dropout cases. Looking at the financial costs, there are two key financial costs that came out very clearly. One, for most of the maternal deaths, prior to the death, we see that they made a lot of effort to seek care. Therefore, they had an average. In fact, a third of their annual income was actually spent seeking care. That is, um, compared to the, uh, the cases, to the controls in this study, we are talking about three to six fold increase in cost for seeking care compared to the cases. So the heavy, heavy financial burden. Then, in addition to that, we found that there is the funeral cost. The funeral cost, in fact, represented um, 
over two times their annual expenditures. We are talking about the expenditures for food, for clothing, and other related. For most families, they had an expenditure of over 150 to 200,000 Kenya shillings um, on average, looking at uh, the, the funeral cost. So apart from the financial costs related to seeking care prior to death, there was the funeral cost. And then in, in addition to that, there was the cost which uh, was related to disruption because of loss of income from the mother. Uh, we quickly see that uh, we had a lot of days lost in terms of not working. We had 16 days on average lost or uh, the families had to take off from their work to actually look for, you know, to take care, uh, uh, provide um, as a caregiver for these women before they died. And unfortunately, it was even worse when there was a death because overall, on average, 26 days during the morning period were actually spent, you know, uh, looking at uh, and sorting out the whole disruption and trying to see how they can move forward with the families. So that put them further into total financial crisis for those families. And we all know in um, Africa, especially in Kenya, women, women actually hold the backbone for agricultural uh, activities. So in this community, especially in Sierra, all these other activities that were actually conducted by the women were, could not be done anymore. So we had uh, the in-laws, the, um, mostly the mother-in-law took the burden of taking care of the children and also providing for the families. But further, some of these tasks were totally left, not done, or somewhat done and it could not actually uh, help the family to survive further. So we are saying that the surviving adults had to juggle family work with the additional household works and some households were pushed further into poverty as they actually had to pay for casual labor to take care of those activities that were actually conducted by the deceased. So overall, what are we saying about uh, the cost of our maternal death? It is devastating. It is devastating for such a family. The loss of a mother, in fact, not only, you know, uh, Hamsa children's health, education, and fit opportunities, but it actually really negatively impacts of the, the well-being of the family. It's not just the immediate family, but the extended family, because some of the uh, tasks and responsibility have to be pushed further to those families. The sudden loss of a productive woman disrupts the economy. It's very clear that the daily life is no longer the same. Life is never the same for that family. The cost of a fatal pregnancy in childbirth complication is a heavy economic burden. We have clearly seen that. Even before a death occurs, the cost incurred trying to seek care after a complication prior to death, we are talking about Sixfold increase compared to a mother who had a normal delivery or a safe delivery. Safe delivery, sorry. So if we had a safe delivery and we are saying the cost is sixfold, that's a huge financial implication to the family. And the final funeral costs are crippling hardship uh, for the family. In fact, most families could not raise the money for funeral costs. For most families, they had to sell their assets, they had to fundraise, they had to get loans everywhere because all the families that participated in this family, please note, none had an insurance cover. So all the funeral costs had to actually be uh, supported by the families and Harambe's and selling assets, which pushed them further to poverty. So, we say in Kenya, every two minutes we have a mother dying. It's very unfortunate that we have these needless deaths that can actually be prevented. We have, uh, we think that these study findings can help catalyze the way forward 
and renew more advocacy efforts and firstly that the study findings demonstrate that we need to have a push for universal access for reproductive, maternal, newborn and child health care. We need to improve the quality of health services in Kenya, including emergency obstetric care. Strengthen referral services and improve financial, social, and especially psychosocial support for women and families facing maternal health crisis. Overall, we think that there is still hope. There is, there is light at the end of the tunnel, and we appreciate this forum that pushes together uh, the, the renewed strength to focus on maternal and child health. Thank you very much.